Hi, everyone, and Happy New Year. My name is Suzanne O'Brien. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we are going to talk about love. We are going to talk about life. We are going to talk about this journey. And this is the Doula Givers Universal Life Mastery Masterclass. Again, welcome, Happy New Year, and I'm so glad you're here. This is going to be hopefully an amazing journey tonight about the understanding of conscious awakening, and I will explain what that is. So again, welcome, welcome. This is something I often say, the minute you stop trying to get there, you will arrive. And again, a lot of this is based on my own personal journey, but also what I've been able to learn from those at the end of life, what I've seen. Um, it has just been such an incredible learning experience about life. So many of you know that I am a end of life practitioner, the founder of Doula Givers International, which is the end of life doula, the doula giver care consultant, um, working with those aging and at the end of life. And it taught me everything about life working in that space. So I'm going to share a lot of that with you um, because we're in this together and we're all wanting, right, to have a meaningful, joyful, connected journey um, the best that we can. So we want to support each other and share what we have, what information we have, and then if somebody can benefit from that, that's fantastic. And that's what I'm doing in this webinar. So one of the things that really happened on my journey was the minute you tr stop trying to get there, um, you'll arrive. And when I break it down tonight about the guidance systems and listening to your knowing, your highest guidance, and stop trying to push but you want to flow. Don't push, flow. I'll, I'll um, you know, it will become very clear what I'm trying to say here in this statement. The minute you stop trying to get there, you'll arrive. Really magical, counterintuitive, but you'll see when we talk about it tonight, um, where the access point to, again, the highest level of consciousness and awareness is located. So if I may, I just want to share a bit about my background. If um, you're not familiar with what I do, so I'm known for working in end of life. I am a registered nurse by trade. I've worked with hospice care and oncology, which is cancer care, most of my nursing career. I have built a global educational platform called Doula Givers International. That is the training for non-medical professionals, for family caregivers. There is a lot of life training within those trainings. Um, and again, we are out on a global level to help support communities everywhere to be self-sufficient, to raise them up so everyone has the best possible um, end of life that they can. But a positive end of life starts way back here when we're living and what we've learned again from those at the end of life can teach you everything about life if we would just pay attention so i have a degree in transpersonal psychology i had that before actually i finished that when i was in nursing school and that is beyond the person beyond the personality so very much a holistic practitioner by trade all my life um, but it's going to be really important when we have this discussion tonight when you understand the um, four bodies of energy that make up us, spiritual teacher and healer. So I think that's, again, what brought me into the space of working with those at the end of life is that there is a level of awareness that I came in, I feel that I came into this journey with, and, it, and um, I'm very you know, privileged and honored to have been brought up again with the awareness that we have end of life but also there's a comfort level, there's a connection um, that's been there that has, again, a knowing that there's so much more to this journey than just what we may perceive, most of us. So there's a, there's a real um, comfort in that. So I, again, have been doing much of this work even before I came to be a registered nurse and started working in that space. I am also a founding member of the NHPCO, which is National Hospice and Palliative Care Organization's End of Life Doula Council, and the former and founder of a member of the NIDA, which is the National End of Life Doula Alliance, 
former vice president, very a um, lot of beautiful work again by both of these organizations, a founder and creator of International Doula Givers Institute and the founder of the Doula Giver Center for Conscious Awakening. And hopefully we'll have centers that will be available all over the world. Um, my goal in the future, when again, we are past this pandemic that's going on and we can get together in person, but again, understanding that we are a global community and we are all connected. We are all connected to all beings and we sh should do whatever we can to bring about that awareness with humanity, with our planet and animals and all the elements. In this webinar, you will learn, number one, how to understand the two main guidance systems within us all that changes everything. Um, so again, I'm going to highlight certain things that if you walk away, when you walk away um, from this webinar, if you only retain that or if that gets um, imprinted on you, it can absolutely change everything. So number one, how to understand the two main guidance systems within us all. Number two, how to tap into and strengthen your highest guidance system to find your true purpose. So we're going to teach you how to differentiate between which one is doing the talking or doing the guiding and again why you want to strengthen and understand the guidance of the high vibrational guidance system because that is trying to open you up to your purpose and path in this life's journey. And number three, how to allow the flow of alignment and co-create with the universe. So back to that statement, the minute you stop trying to get there, you'll arrive. Um, we'll, we'll keep coming back to that because there's so much here that when you, and I call it, and again, I'm using myself as a, as a major example. When you, when you get out of me, not trying to figure it all out and push in the mental body of energy, which is the ego or the, or, or the programmed or the small body, and you open up to that, what I call that intersection of, you know, trust and belief, or again, you know, trust and then the universe. When you have that sitting in the pocket of that highest vibration with intention, um, with, of, of again, how we're going to show you the four pillars of each day of the practice. And then you trust in that intention and just allow that's when the universe will show up for you. Okay. So universal life mastery, what is it? So the universal life mastery masterclass is the teaching of what is the goal of life and how to achieve master it. So we want, we're in this, right? It's almost, you know, it's a school. Um, it's a school of life. It's having this human experience. For what though? What is the goal of it? I mean, I think I've always been asking this and always been seeking. And again, there's never any judgment with anything that we share or say or do. You know, everyone is on their own journey. And I think that is one of the most important things to digest is that we're all on our own journey and it's all perfect. It's all perfect. So does everyone have to agree with you? No. Is everyone going to? We know the answer is no to that. However, if you show up with what I call that mirror of truth and that shine and that unconditional love of connection, knowing that we're all connected, when you show up in that space um, and shine that light on others, they get it they receive it somewhere. And if they're ready, that can be extremely healing for them. So again, we're all on our own journey. And the, the thing that's again, super important for this webinar to take away is that you and only you can do the work for your journey. So we can show up, right? We can show up together and we want to, we want to shine our love and our light because that's what we do. But with no, with no attachment to it, we just want to be love because that's what ultimately this is where that's received and where that can be transformational with somebody else is because they're ready to receive that and they're ready to bring that in but it's up to them to again receive it and then to do the work that we have to do because we all have work that we have to do as far as shifting our energy and our perspective letting go removing blocks healing our hearts forgiving 
all of these beautiful things that are part of the human experience. Not easy, but not difficult either, and also completely transformative. So why is it important? Universal Life Masterclass, why is this important? Because we're seeking, right? What is the point to this journey called life? How do we get there? I think whether or not we call it that, we're all trying to figure it out. I know I have been and was and, and still am. There's all these things to learn. But when you sit in the pocket of alignment, when you're able to understand, again, the two guidance systems, tap into your higher soul guidance system and let go. Let go of all the you know, worry or the things that you think you're supposed to do or, or should be doing or what society says and all that and just be. Practice presence, practice awareness, practice compassion. How may I serve? Instead of what can I, what is in it for me? How can I contribute? Allows you to again flow in that higher vibration of alignment. And whether or not we're all aware or that we're on the different levels of it, we're all seeking that. So again, many of us go through different periods of it being more of a, um, you know, an ego based, what is in it for me? Um, because again, society is kind of telling us power and material things and money and looks and all, all these things are the goal, are the ones that bring you the uh, value to you. And that is incorrect. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them, but that is completely incorrect. Um, and so what is the goal? And then, and then sometimes again, this experience is very painful. And then there are periods of time. Uh, maybe lots that we know with people that they are just trying to stop their pain. So they are running, what we call runners. So um, constantly, you know, maybe they've had past experiences that have been very painful. Maybe they've done things that they're very ashamed of, very painful, and they're just doing things to stop that pain, to, to, to shift out of that awareness. So maybe it's, you know, certain addictions or we know whatever it can be. Um, there's, there's multi multiple things, but again, there's no judgment here. This is, there's no judgment. We don't have the right to judge anyone. The universe does not judge us. It's all about the learning in the journey. However, every single person, no matter what your past is, no matter what your circumstance is, has the ability to remove blocks, to elevate your consciousness to your energetic vibration and to reach that place of alignment, no matter who you are, what you've done. Um, and that's so incredible. And that's so incredible. So what can you do? L you can learn to look at the world with new perspectives. So this is again, when we talk about the shifting, when we talk about vibration and energy, it is looking at things with new lenses on. I think that's one of the best ways to explain it. If you had, okay, so if you had rose colored glasses on, you know, people use that expression. Um, you, you have those on your eyes. Everything you look at is through that lens. Well, this is very much the same as your vibrational level. Um, so you, and, and we'll go through it again in a bit, but just on a quick kind of connection to what I'm talking about here, you know people in your life right now who are having a really difficult time, who are, you know, things are always sort of in a crisis or a, a trauma or tragedy even type of existence um, and maybe suffering from depression and anxiety and all these type of things. And it's very heavy. It's a very, very heavy life experience. And you know other people in your life that are having a very light experience that they seem to always kind of come out um, on a sunnier side of things. So that is, again, a way of sharing perspective. And it's not just perspective of how you look at something with lenses. It is the energy you're emitting from your body with thoughts, with actions, with emotions that's attracting back the like. Now, I don't wanna go too far too fast, but there are universal laws that have been in place since day one that are thousands of years old, that if we got back to these universal truths, we would have a much different world that we're living in. And we're gonna talk about that in this webinar tonight. 
So again, just understanding that the learning um, to look at the world with a new perspective, a new lens, new awareness, new vibration. Understand the universal truths, we'll talk about that, and then to practice and strengthen your connection. Because guess what? <laughs> it doesn't come all free. First is the awareness and the understanding of what we're talking about. And then comes the practice, but um, it's not hard. It can be as little as 10 minutes a day. It can be very simple, but we do have to practice it. I have to practice it all the time. Um, and again, the more that I'm aware of it, the stronger my connection and then the easier that flow is with the alignment. The beginning middle and end game is love and it's unconditional love so um that's what i want to start and i want to share that with you and again there's no judgment so there is it is all love um this is a picture that i took at omega institute and it says of course you are loved i did not make that it was there with the rocks but it's really gorgeous and i love that picture and you are loved now, my patience and finding consciousness. So I want to share with you again that I've learned everything about living pretty much from when I started to work in end of life. What kind of sense does that make? You know, many times people will say, how can you even do that work? And it is the most beautiful, sacred connection and work, and it's the hardest thing I've ever done. And obviously there are so many gaps in that area and people are suffering terribly because of the system, because of multiple reasons why we're in this very dysfunctional relationship with death right now that we are. However, it is such a beautiful space to work in and there is so much need to have it go better. I can't even begin to, to start with that, well, you know, I do webinars and teachings all about that. But I'll ask you this, is dying a medical experience? And, you know, people get confused when I ask that. Or is it a human experience? So it's a human experience. And what was happening with my beautiful patients from all different backgrounds and cultures and religions is there were common themes. There were common experiences that they were having towards the end of life. There were common things that they would say at the end of life. And then of course, you know, what I've experienced with them has been so very powerful. So let's go over a couple of things that end of life patients say. They talk about going home. They talk about going home as they get closer to the end of life. And they are home. Nine out of 10 people wanna be at home at end of life, most of them that I've cared for, aside from being an oncology nurse in the hospital, has been in their home. They're not, they're not talking about the physical home. There is a spiritual connected home that we are all a part of. Now, when I'm working with somebody in their physical body, so my um, belief system, and I have found science to help obviously back this, uh, but my belief system is when I'm journeying with somebody towards the end of life and their physical body is becoming less and less, their spiritual body is becoming more and more. And they get what I call spiritual wisdom or spiritual eyes. And that's when they talk about going to this home. And when they talk about it, they talk about it in the most serene, peaceful, loving way. I'm going home. I'm going home. Like just like you would think if you haven't been home in a long time, but even a better home. Um, so the other thing that happens is there's no space and time that we both, that we know it. So many times when I'm working with people, especially at that very last um, section, time, the way you and I know it, disappears, dissolves. Um, and so does space. So there's sort of this magical kind of energy that doesn't have time and space to it. They find themselves for the first time, again, as they're, so all of the things that we've been taught in society that give us value, right? What you look like, what kind of job you have, how much money you have, who you're married to, you know, what all those nonsense things, and I'm not saying that you can't have them, but use them, don't let them use you, and use them just for what they are, and use them for good. If you have a circumstance where you're able to give and to share, um, then that's what we should be doing. But 
they find themselves for the first time because as these personality traits or ego traits or values are are going away so their physical appearance is gone their capabilities are gone their titles are gone um it doesn't matter what they have anymore they're you know they're sometimes you know right then and there sitting in a bed or bed bound and they find their true essence because that spiritual that inside that higher self is starting to grow and blossom and they realize that <gasps> the whole time it's been there, but my light has been completely turned down and dim. I've let all this other uh, programmed ego subconscious beat me up and tell me I'm not good enough or uh, keep me out of what you call alignment. So they find themselves for the first time, maybe ever. They talk about us being all connected, that we are all connected to one universal energy. And this comes from all different religions and backgrounds. So you have to pay attention to that. Every experience, they talk about every, every, every experience was a gift, even the most painful ones that we have gone through were the greatest opportunities for growth. Now they're looking at it from a different perspective. Remember this, this perspective, the changing of the lens, the looking at something from a different angle and seeing what that was, the truth in that experience, that was an opportunity for, for growth for the evolution of our soul's growth. And this just happens so, so much. So there's a patient that I was just reading a story about, and it's just so incredibly beautiful. And it really, again, um, validates what I'm sharing with you now about what patients say. This particular man was a World War II veteran. And some of the veterans, obviously, thank you so much for the service from our veterans at the end of life they have been some of the most difficult end of lives because of all of the trauma that they've gone through this particular man was talking about he had a very very deep depression his whole life attribute it to his you know his days in horrific conditions in world war ii and he talks about with the social worker from hospice he talks about he was different one day and and this social workers you know was saying to him what's went back to his uh, barracks one night after just a completely awful day of carnage and all of that and was crying crying uncontrollably crying just so much pain and crying and he remembers hearing a squeaking on his on his cot and when he looked at the end of his cot there was a man sitting there in a world war one uniform and he says he was he was full of light um and so he says that he had the helmet on, but he was covered in light, like he was glowing in the dark. And this man starts to tell the social worker, he starts crying, but he starts laughing at the same time that he's sharing this. He said, because the, the social worker asked, what was this man doing sitting at the end of the cot? He said, he was looking at me with love. I could feel it. I'd never felt that kind of love before. Um, and so he said, I can't even put it into words. I guess I just felt I was worth something like all of the pain and cruelty wasn't real, what I was going through. And knowing that no matter how screwed up the cruel and cruel the world looks on some level, somehow we are all loved. We are all connected. So it goes on to share. This man shares that this man is back in his life now that he is at the end of life so he came to oh and it turns out that it was his uncle that um because he found a picture in his mom's belonging so it was his uncle who was who died in world war one and what is amazing and the shift that had happened was that this uncle was back and he was back to help cross him over and my patients will tell me this all of the time that my mom was here last night, my dad was here. Um, and again, there's a shifting that happens when somebody has access to that kind of unconditional loving energy of what's gonna happen next of someone they haven't seen. So this is so important because we have, we have removed end of life and the beautiful, teachings and awareness about 
all of this from our society right now. And if we brought that back, and just if, I'm not even telling you you have to believe this, just if, um, what does this mean about how we've been living? So let's explore. What if there was no beginning and no end? What if there was really no beginning and no end to this bigger journey? How would we be living differently right now? How would you be living differently right now? It's the evolution of the soul. So this is all in this journey of life is about soul growth. This is the school of life to expand our consciousness and remember who you truly are. And I know you have glimpses of it. I know you know this. I know you have moments where you remember in a dream, in a, in a moment of presence, of nature, of that unconditional love with a stranger, with animal, with nature, with your family. There is that connection that is so strong that it's almost where you don't have words for it. So remembering and, and connecting, reconnecting back to that. So number one, how do you understand the two main guidance systems within us all, conscious versus unconscious? So let's break that down as simply as we can. You have two directionals that are guiding you. You have a conscious mind, which is your higher self, and you have a subconscious mind. And both are beautiful. So I don't want us to think that there's one that's terrible and that we have to push it away and fight it because it's all about integration and love and acceptance. However, you do need to know that if you're not aware of this, 95% of the time your subconscious mind is directing your life. And unfortunately, the subconscious mind is the one who is fearful, is the one who, um, is always, again, thinking, how can I get more for me? And if I don't get it, somebody else is going to get it. And keeping you in a state of, you know, the best way to say it is out of balance and out of conscious alignment. Because in conscious alignment, we're connected and everything is perfect right here, right now in this moment. So it's almost, if you can consider it, that the subconscious mind can't exist if you strengthen your conscious mind or it doesn't have as much power and all of that. So understanding again, the, the subconscious mind is your mental programming. So from day one that you pop out of the womb, that it's on so that you are now being considering that you're separate, identifying that you're separate and, and are being programmed with all of the stimuli, all of the things that are around you, everything you hear, see, what you're told, how people respond to you, all of that is being programmed in your subconscious mind, but that is only one small part of you. A very damaging part if it's uncontrolled and let loose to run the muck. So if you can think of a very ill-behaved child that is not, has no boundaries and, and you know, maybe even has, you know, unlimited amounts of, you know, things that they can cause damage with and is just running around like a loose cannon, that is the subconscious mind in us all, if not controlled and identified and understood. So the outfit of the day, why do I call it the outfit of the day? Who you are today? I'm Suzanne, I'm five foot eight, um, green eyes, look a certain way, I'm a nerd. This is just an outfit of the day. If, if you're going to look at the big picture of the journey. So I'm talking about this big evolution of, of this whole point of life. This is just a part of the journey and it is just the outfit of the day that I chose to wear. So there's belief system that before you come into this journey that you are you know, given an, like a blueprint of what you're actually gonna experience, what you're gonna look like, what, what um, you know, forks in the road you're going to come into contact with. It's your choice if you go right or go left. Um, these are all opportunities for soul growth. Challenging, difficult, yes, I'm not saying they're not, but once we understand this, how incredibly powerful this can be. So what we want to do is, again, not over-identify or put value on uh, the outfit of the day. It's just an outfit of the day. Whatever you chose to wear, 
whatever, whatever you are, we're all the same. We're all connected. Our hearts are all inside all the same. That's the truth. So again, your personality is the subconscious. Personality. And so that you're going to define that with all of the programming and response that you get from people. And we want to make sure that we understand the difference with the guidance systems of what is happening. We'll go more into that. The illusion of separateness. The minute you pop out, it starts the illusion of separateness that you you're you and everyone else is everyone else. And kind of, you know, people are like, well, this is a race, right? Who can get there fastest? Who can get the most? Who can be smarter, better, stronger, have more? Um, no, 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 no. So that's a that's an illusion. So we're all connected. Now go back to my end of life patients who will validate that we are all connected to one unconditional, loving, conscious energy. So this is an illusion and we have to know what we need to do to shift the energy, shift the vibrational frequency to tap into that oneness. Now, let's back it by some science, shall we? I love this. So I remember I used to give talks and people, and I tell literally bedside stories of incredible things that patients would say. Oh, I mean, it's just, honestly, it's been magical. And then I remember this man coming up to me in the set. He said, Suzanne, he said, that was such a beautiful presentation, but can you prove it? And I thought, never even occurred to me that we have to prove or disprove. But then I said, ah, well, I couldn't at that moment, I couldn't prove it, but, but could you prove that it didn't happen? You know, that it wasn't happening. And then I, and then I did find uh, proof because there's a whole, there's a whole part of science that it, this is all about energy quantum physics. So your fifth grade science is that energy is matter and matter cannot be destroyed. It can only be a solid, a liquid, or a gas. So if you want to go back to even fifth grade, there you have it, that energy cannot be destroyed. It can only change form. But here, let's go, let's go even further. There's a theory. It's called the theory of non-locality by Henry P. Stapp, Dean of Quantum Physics, the University at Berkeley. And he quotes, the theory of non-locality just may be the most profound finding in all of science. Now, the theory of non-locality means this. We are not local entities. We are all connected to one source energy. Okay, so you've got science backing this up. And I can do, I do a whole bunch of different graphs and show you about high vibration, low vibration, um, what the megahertz are with people who are, their bodies are ill when they die. Um, it's incredibly powerful and beautiful. This is all scientific. So yeah, there is scientific data and things that are studied and concrete, but, but I want you to tap into your knowing. You know, and I'll teach you how to do this, um, but there's a part of you that knows the truth right off the bat. You don't even need, you don't need a scientific um, research study to show you something. However, it's super nice to sort of have this because I, I love the science of um, the physics because it's all about this. But again, the theory of non-locality, we are not local entities. And he says, just may be the most profound finding in all of science. And there has been a lot of profound finding in science. So that's pretty cool. Now, the level of your conscious awakening, the level where you vibrate at, will be the dimension of reality you experience. So you've probably heard, create your reality. We create our reality. Well, there's a lot of truth to that, for sure. Um, and I'm gonna, again, share with you how this is a vibrational frequency based on certain things that where you are in the alignment, or out of alignment, and I'm gonna share, share that with you. Um, this is a picture that I wanna share that I took in Central Park, New York City this year. And I remember it was by the reservoir and I remember um, seeing this beautiful cardinal, the top one, and that's a male, by the way. And it was bopping around, it was really close and I was, I was watching and loving and taking a video. And then um, I remember it went up into the tree and I wanted to take a picture of it. And I remember take, aiming my phone and taking the picture. And when I looked at the picture on my phone, there was another cardinal and that's a female, the one that's lighter in color. 
and they literally look like they're they're kissing to me. So when you tap in, when you're connected, when you resonate with what's around you um, in a way that, again, we're all connected, when you see yourself and you literally are vibrating and connecting with things, it's a pretty spectacular, magical world in which we live in. And what I call name that miracle, there are little miracle things that happen um, that are not miracles at all. They're just in that higher vibration that are pretty incredible when you hear people talk about them. So in our groups of Life Cafe, we have a segment called Name That Miracle. And people will talk about, you know, different amazing uh, things that happen, especially with nature, you know, a rainbow appearing or the sun part, like on a day that's, you know, pouring rain and the sun comes out or, you know, this um, eagle feather drops down. So just beautiful, beautiful things. But again, the level of your vibration, so the higher the vibration is where the dimension of your existence, and that will be the reality of which you will be experiencing the life's journey. Remember, we talked about people in the life that you know that are having a really consistently heavy, difficult time in the journey. And people in your life you know that are having a light flowing, um, easier time in the journey. There's no judgment. It's not saying one is right or wrong. It's where people are, but it's amazing the difference. Good vibes, good vibes. So it's all about energetic vibration. And again, you know, maybe good, you know, you can equate that, you can say light, because I don't want you to think that people who are having a heavier journey are, are bad. So good, bad, we don't want that, that's not it. Everyone is on, is having their own journey. We wanna have compassion and empathy and reach out a hand and also a reflection of, the light within them. So when you show up with unconditional love, with no judgment, with the kindness, you're reflective. You're reflecting the light that is within them, even if that light is just a little time. Because they're so heavy with what they're they're going through, their belief system, their thoughts, their actions are creating that heaviness, those blocks, those energy blocks. But when you can be that reflective light um, of who they truly are, it's pretty amazing um, what that can do for people. So let's talk about the higher frequency, the good vibes. How does that work? So here's a great example of walking through life and, and having the same thing in front of us, right? But one in clear view or a lot more detail and vibrant and one fuzzy. So if you were walking along and you saw the one on the right, maybe would you even notice it? Would you even really know what that was or would you be able to resonate with it? So again, this is dependent on the level where you're vibrating. So vibrational reality are either in alignment or out of alignment. There's no judgment here, but it, when you're clicked into alignment, it flows. It's easy, it's joyful, it's good stuff. When you're out of alignment, anxious, depressed, pushing, restless, not good enough. Um, gosh, alignment is so much nicer. And you can get there understanding it and then knowing how to, again, strengthen your connection with it. So your thoughts create your reality, but, so you might hear a lot about this. Your thoughts create your reality, so just think something nice. Okay, so, okay, part of that, yeah, that's true, but there's, but, 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 <laughs> there's so much behind that. So when you, again, understand the four bodies of energy, and I get a lot of this from my working with patients at the end of life, your thoughts equal how you feel and how you feel equals the emotion you emit. So lots to how you feel is based on your four bodies of energy and what's going on there. This is where the work and the transformation comes in. So this is where you identify each one of those bodies of energy where they are needing nurturing or healing um, and then consistency in the practice. And you can, again, lighten them all up, raise that vibration to, again, click into that alignment so much easier. So yeah, your thoughts create your reality. But if your life is really super hard, you can't just think of a rainbow and that's going to work. You, you need to get more in there. You need to know that you 
have an emotional body that has blips of energy stuck from your whole lifetime. Every time you were hurt, every time something painful happened, you have, unless you it has been resolved already, there is a locked form of that energetic vibration. And a lot of times the most painful, we block them and push them way far down because we don't want to feel it. And guess what? It comes out eventually, right? And also you have to remove things to release them. So uh, there is this is where the work and transformation comes in, but it's not as hard as you may think. So look, I love that little lock and key with the heart on it. So number two is how to tap into and strengthen your highest guidance system to find your true purpose. And why do I say find your true purpose then? Because when you align with your highest soul truth, it will open up for you the path of your purpose and journey in this lifetime. So again, get out of your own way. Stop trying to figure it out with the program thinking. We all came in with a gift and goal, if not several gifts. You come in to honor that gift and then to align that gift with your purpose and your personality. Use your personality as an asset to you and then to be of service with that gift. Um, really powerful and really beautiful. So four bodies of energy consist of each one of us, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And the physical, yeah, you know, you know what that is, but here's the thing. You got to take care of your vehicle. And I'm talking to myself too. <laughs> I have to do my work every day too. You know, and there's times that I'm doing it better than others. We have got to take care of the beautiful physical body we've been given. And you know as well as I do that when you are not feeling well, when you're not doing a physical movement or you're eating junky foods, you feel heavy. The flow is blocked. So again, all of these things um, have direct relationship to the level of light and vibration that you will be vibrating again on. But one of the biggest things is the mental body, which is the subconscious, because again, that rules the ruse 95% of the time if we're not aware of it. So that is one of the biggest changes that you um, should walk away with tonight. But emotional body, I'm just going to say that that has to do a lot of, with trauma and forgiveness and the spiritual that's super beautiful connecting to um, a oneness of all things. So you want to learn how to raise your vibrations in all four bodies of energy, the practice of awareness. And again, you know, I have to do this every day. And there are times that I am not practicing as much. And again, we're in a very difficult time of COVID and a time that, you know, there, there are elements going on where you feel if you can just get through the day. So there's no judgment here. There's no beating yourself up if you, you're you not practicing or you're not, you know, or you've dropped it for a while and just ate chocolate for a time period. That is okay, but understanding that this is a practice and a consistency, again, about the frequency to which we can vibrate is very, very important. The mental body, again, the subconscious runs the show 95% of the time if we're not aware of it. It is the personality and identifying with the programmed mind, learned behavior, le learned society norms, um, love conditionally. And so what we really want you to hone into there is that love is unconditional. Love is not conditional. But unfortunately, there are many that I will love you if you act like this, or if you look like this, or if you do this. Um, and that even comes from our parents. You know, they are well-intended. They want the best for us, but I'd love you if you get good grades. And if you, you know, go and whatever it may be. Um, so love is unconditional. It's not conditional. And again, our value and worth, um, our value is the conditional on what we have, what we, and that's again, the subconscious way. That's not the truth, but that's what the predominant way that we live in our world right now. Very sad. Mental body of energy, subconscious mind is again, conditioned. It's ego. It's ego. What about me? What about me? What about me? Me, me, me. I, I want to win. I'm the best. Um, learned intellect, analytical, and this is where the danger comes in because when you are going to be making a decision for your life, any decision, small, big, medium, 
when you bring in the analytical mind and of course it is good and it does good things for you it's analyzing it's literally your computer that's just going through all of your files that have been programmed in there and spitting out the answer but that answer is all based on program but it comes out and it feels right right because that's who you are that's how your experience has been you got to be super careful here because everything on paper may tell you to go right. You know in your heart that you don't want that job. Even though it has a great pay and great benefits and traveling, something does not feel right inside you. Yet everyone's like, that's a great opportunity. You gotta take it. So you take it and what happens then? You're miserable. Your soul is starving. Your soul is starving. And when you're not nourishing your soul, you're dying inside on some level. So be very careful about understanding the difference between the subconscious and the conscious mind and when you are making a decision because the analytical will spit out the right answer, spit out the right answer, except for it's the right answer based on the subconscious programmed data. So when you go down that road, you keep pumping up against why am I not happy? Why am I not happy? What's happening here? And of course, you were getting those internal signs of this isn't right. I know this isn't the right decision for me. So this is what I'm going to teach you to uh, strengthen. It's fear driven too. You better get it before they do. If you don't work harder, somebody else is going to get more people on their social media to like them or whatever it is, or sell more things or have a better. Do not let the ego, because the ego will keep you out of balance, always undermining you. So it bases success and worth, worthiness on acquired material things, status, power, money, and what I call a destination or an outcome. So we just want to be really sensitive to that. And, and the minute you start practicing this and understanding what's talking, you'll get it. You'll get it. And here's an easy rule of thumb. If you feel anxious if you feel irritated frustrated um that's that's all ego if you have to push too hard to make something happen the universe is telling you this is not the right decision for you it's trying to help block it for you the universe is always working on your behalf pay attention and that's where you can strengthen that higher guidance system so you can hear the whispers you can hear you can know you can see in your mind's eye the truth and you strengthen that connection that it starts to drop in and get very, very clear and starts just to you know, deliver you on that path of co-creation. So the state of the world today is largely due to most people operating entirely on the subconscious ego level of direction. People are blowing each other up. People are blowing each other up, starving each other, doing the cruelest things to one another. And that's all the subconscious mind because if it's not you, it's going to be them. So it better be, you better get it first, or you better be top dog or whatever it will be. Um, so we need to come back to, let's give love a chance. Let's let love lead in 2021 and beyond. It's not working the other way. I think we can all say it's not working. Let's just try to trust and let's lead with our hearts which is the conscious part of us and not our minds. I'm just gonna put that out there for that love challenge. The spiritual body is consciousness. It is your true self. And here's one of our great teachers. You will never find true joy and fulfillment, joy and fulfillment in your life until you find know how to access the true self your higher self, and that's by Eckhart Tolle, and I adore him. But I want you to see what he said here, try to find true joy and fulfillment. So it wasn't, you know, wealth, riches, that kind of thing, even though I love to use those two terms synonymous with your connection, that wealth of the love that you have, the richness of, again, the amount of alignment you have. But let's just say for the sake of it is that super important here that we're all really looking for what's called fulfillment, not happiness, not 
material things that we've been taught is going to bring that you're really looking for fulfillment and that's the connection so it's not again it's not bad to have those things and have lots of money of course you can do great things with your platform um, but not necessarily what we're really looking for is this it's this frequency and vibrational connection to the fulfillment of oneness fulfill my connection my growth my life experience to getting into that space because once you're in that space of flow nothing matters nothing matters doesn't matter how much you it's not about what you have what you look like what you, it's about my heart is connected and full there are only again two dimensions being and doing so when you break this down again this is conscious versus um and versus i don't really like versus because it's not a competition or a battle it's just a reality of but i'm into the integration and the love and we all go together being are you a human doing or a human being so remember the, the ego is going to keep you in a hamster wheel frenetic gotta go do this do this do this do this um it's kind of like the squirrel brain um or are you being are you connected are you in the moment are you present so again, being is consciousness in flow and doing is unconscious out of flow. Although again, we are, you know, having the human experience. So we have to do things, but you want to do it with the highest guidance system and in flow with that flow behind you. So doing, if you want to start to break it down, that subconscious is goal oriented. I'll be happy when. I get a big house. I'll be happy when I marry that perfect mate. I'll be happy when I have a million dollars i don't know you can it's goal oriented that's not what this is about it's a vibrational level it's not a destination happiness is dependent on reaching the goal focused on an outcome and prevents you from living in the present moment how many of us do that so you know now i can't you know i i'm not ready to do that or i i i won't you know i can't do it until this this is ready and this is done and this is done making excuses and i'm not again there's no judgment here but we want to be in tapped into this moment right now in alignment in love in community in connection and the being is conscious seeing the in every person animal plant element being remember those birds connecting with nature what listening to nature nature will heal us what happened when the pandemic started and we all had a time out, right? We all got quiet. Nature thrived. It thrived. So looking at nature, connecting with nature um, and the energy, the ions from nature, um, from planet Earth. I mean, it's all there. There's, you know, earthing and grounding, which again, we'll be talking about more as we go into more classes. But just know that again, you're being, you are a human being is that present awake connection to all things number three how to allow the flow of alignment and co-create with the universe so this is what i will share with you that i use these four pillars of practice and again i try and live each day as one little lifetime so that again takes me right out of the future goal setting to reach a destination and puts it right in front of me in one one small place of this is my day because again honestly we don't know how many days we have um and so we want to have the gratitude and the love in each one so in each day i try and live with intention so that brings me into presence gratitude love and service so this is how i try and greet meet and and interact in my day with those four pillars of practice do not be attached to the outcome. So this is how you allow. And this is, again, counterintuitive to what we've been told in the conscious, uh, the subconscious mind. When you set a goal to be of service and unconditionally loving and connected, you have to let that just be, be out there, right? Be out there um, and not be crazy or attached to how many people received you how many people did you help um because that's ego you have to have that intention in your heart and you want to live in that present moment of gratitude and awareness and showing up 
and then you have to let it go and then you have to trust and this is where the intersection of trust and alignment with universal co-creation meet because there's that little section that it's not going to be on a printout that makes total sense in and it's all the all of it's lined up and all of it all the boxes are checked and everything says yes you this is where you are you have to know in your heart you have to trust in that that this is how i want to show up in my day with an open heart with no agenda get yourself out of it i don't want to say oh well, i'm going to make a thousand calls today and i'm going to you know do this because that's ego you do you do have to participate but you want to participate from a heart centered role of service and then you have to just let let the universe take it. Now I will share with you a very special little thing that if you are in that space of pure alignment in your heart and you drop something into the universal bucket, if it is in that place of pure intention, the universe will pick that up and expand it. It's limitless, limitless of what will be birthed because you are co creating now on that high frequency level of unconditional love of the highest service and the universe is working with you as a co-creator all things are possible all things and they will be presented to you so you want to stay open so it's really that you want to empty out the chatter the ego you want to get out of your own way and you want to ground in your practice with connecting raising your vibrations and then you want to just listen set your intention before you go to bed universe how may i serve i always ask to see here and know see here and know in clarity how i may show up now and always to be of the highest service so again don't be attached to the outcome stay in intentional presence and wait for guidance the universe is whispering all of the time to you you want to listen because you will be accessing your gifts that you came in with and you will be aligning them with opportunity to be of service in purpose and that flow in alignment in this lifetime do a daily practice of consciousness it is like a muscle practice and strength and i have to remind myself and sometimes i'm not doing as good of a job and sometimes i do better and th no guilt but boy when you are in flow, you never want to be out of flow. So it is a real, it is a real practice and it's an ongoing practice. And there's techniques that can really, really help. There's techniques that can strengthen. There's techniques that can help you remove those energetic blocks that we've had all our lifetime. We've, we've been picking up blocks and blips. That's part of the, the journey. So if you're ready to do the work to release them, um, to help you get more in alignment, then this is a perfect opportunity to do that. Here's your first exercise in the practice of knowing awareness. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a tool today to practice because it's going to be show you how you use your techniques to hone into your understanding of your guidance system. I want you tonight or tomorrow morning before you jump out of bed is a beautiful energetic space. Um, to, to be again, highly connected. I want you to take a few deep breaths and I want you to sit quietly with your eyes quiet and I want you to open your heart chakra, which is in the center of your chest. And I want you to bring in a beautiful golden light that's bathing you. And I want you to say to yourself and think about this class, this webinar, and ask yourself this, is this true to me? Does what I heard tonight, does that ring on the highest level of truth? And how? And then I want you to notice how your body feels. Do you feel a warm comfort? Do you feel peaceful? Do you feel joy? Do you feel all excited? Do you feel all of those things? Or do you feel anxious or uncomfortable or that the analytic you have to try and convince it and say well this was right but this wasn't right and maybe this is right but this isn't right this is how you start to tune into knowing what your highest guidance system is and is not so when you have any question that comes up in your day you want to sit quietly and get grounded you can do this outside is very easy too and you want to say to yourself 
is that the right decision for me? Does this feel right? Should I be moving to Florida? Should I be dating that person? You want to base these decisions on your highest guidance system, which is every cell in your body, your energetic field, your knowing. You're going to hone into that. You're going to really, again, strengthen and perfect that. You're going to realize when the ego is popping up to keep you off of center and when you need to just take a moment and say, hey, ego, thank you so much for reminding me that I have more work to do, but I've got this. You can relax and you want to get grounded and into center to have that be, again, connected to your highest guidance system. So I first want you to ask this to yourself with this training tonight, with this webinar, whenever you feel called to do it tonight, tomorrow, sit with yourself, take some deep breaths and say, was that true? Is that really, is that really right? What, what she said? And just see what your body says, what your higher knowing says. All right. I have a free life mastery five day challenge. And again, this is going to start January 18th. It's going to run for five days. It's going to be a very simple one technique a day, about, you know, five, 10 minutes of training and then an exercise to do. It's going to show you how to start to raise those vibrations in the different bodies of energy. And I want you to see the shift that's over those five days. If this is something that you feel you want to take part in, um, we'll send out an email next week. And again, this is a free five day challenge. I want you to see how this works. Why am I doing this? I am doing this because this is the time that we are all in a place of wanting to grow, most of us, right? And I want to share with you what I've been privileged to learn and see and know and, and use in my journey. And so if, if it can help anyone, if you're ready to do that and you want to embark on it, let's do it. So I'm going to, again, do a five-day challenge with a little exercise each day so you can see how the little day of 10-minute practice can literally change your energy field, which will change that perspective. Yay and yay. And again, we have Life Cafe, and this is something that is another offering. This is totally free. Three times a week we get on Zoom. Um, we have amazing communities that just meet each other in presence, in unconditional love, meet each other where they are. And again, you can um, join us at any time, and they have been so transformative. And we are building the future of the world in which we want to live in that is just and unconditionally loving and beautiful for all beings everywhere. Thank you all so very much. If you want to join Life Cafe, you can go to doulagiversinstitute.com and you can just jump into one of the Zoom calls. I actually have one right now, so I have to kind of jump off this and go on to Zoom. Um, but please look forward to next week. You'll get an email and to invite you into the five-day um, challenge for the vibrational level. And I really hope that you enjoyed this webinar. I absolutely enjoyed being with you tonight. I want to thank you so much. And again, you open up your flow to the universe and alignment and the universe opens up to you. Um, I will share with you my journey of getting out of my own way and I don't do anything other than that. It has opened up the most miraculous, loving journey um, that I could have ever imagined. I am beyond grateful and I am so privileged to be with you tonight. So thank you all. I look forward to seeing you in the challenge. If you have any questions, please email support at doulagivers.com. Happy New Year and love to each and every one of you. Good night, everyone.